What Dirty Secrets Michael Burry Didn't Tell Us About the Big Short Crash 2008 Most people roll their eyes at the mere thought of economics and finance. That is, if those eyes haven't glazed over first. So we don't blame you for being a little scared before approaching the big short. Don't be. Filled to the brim with human stories and blessedly free of equations and graphs, the big short is the perfect starting point for learning about the 2008 financial crisis. After all, do you even know what caused the 2008 stock market crash? Today we're going to talk all about what Michael Burry didn't tell us about the 2008 market crash. So watch the video till the end, because today's video is going to be the bomb. Welcome to Michael Burry Secrets, your daily dose of Michael Burry. If you're interested in everything around Burry, this is the place for you. Subscribe if you want to stay updated with all the Michael Burry secrets, predictions, and stay one step ahead in the financial world. Watch the video till the end, and make sure to hit the like button if you want to be a millionaire within the next three years. Don't forget to enable all notifications to join our weekly cash giveaway in the comments. Now let's get to our topic. The entire global economy was nearly destroyed by home mortgages. Really? Over the 80s and 90s, financial companies started investing heavily in Americans' home mortgages, propped up by the assumption that home prices would never go down. You know what happens when you assume. By the early 2000s, these mortgages had become the foundation for our entire economic system, even though the actual quality of those mortgages had been declining for years. To make things even stranger, the ratings agencies were acting like these terrible mortgages were top of the line. To anyone who was looking, it should have been obvious that a financial collapse was imminent, but there were only a handful of people with this foresight, one of which is Michael Burry, an isolated genius from California. Another is Steve Eisman, a New York analyst looking to spark a class war. Rounding out our group are Charles Ledley and Jamie Mai, two super smart college grads whose intelligence is only matched by their aimlessness. A ragtag bunch of misfits, these ones. These four fellows are among the select few who see the coming mortgage apocalypse and made bets, big bets, that it would happen. As they fight tooth and nail to turn their suspicions into millions of dollars, they learn the gut-wrenching details of the U.S. mortgage bond market. For instance, the fact that this market is about to rain down fire and brimstone on countless working-class Americans. It sounds like heavy material, but it's delivered with an easy touch by author Michael Lewis. Lewis spent some time in the finance world himself during the 80s, but he left disgusted with the industry and wrote Liar's Poker, which is basically the 80s version of The Big Short. Lewis has written a ton of other massively popular nonfiction books as well, including Moneyball, The Blind Side, and Flash Boys. If you didn't notice, two out of three of those books have been turned into movies, just as The Big Short was in 2015. So channel your inner 99 percenter and get ready to learn the nitty gritty griminess at the core of our financial system. That is, if you can handle it. The big short investor, Michael Burry, blasted the Federal Reserve for its trading scandal, underlined the inflation threat using Costco, and deleted his Twitter account yet again this week. Bond and stock markets depend on a Fed stripped of all credibility, Burry said in a now deleted tweet. He cited the central bank's mismanagement of the global financial crisis, its decision to cut interest rates three times in 2019, and the revelation this month that two of its regional presidents, Robert Kaplan and Eric Rosengren, traded stocks and other securities last year. The Scion Asset Management chief attached a screenshot of Kaplan's latest financial disclosure form, which showed the official traded millions of dollars worth of Tesla, Chevron, Johnson & Johnson, and other stocks in 2020. Both Kaplan and Rosengren announced their resignations this week, the latter citing health issues. Burry, who has warned of a huge market bubble and predicted the mother of all crashes is coming in recent months, also rang the inflation alarm. Inflationary mindset is not something you'd want to short, he tweeted. Ask Costco. Costco's finance chief, Richard Galanti, noted the rising cost of goods, such as oil, coffee, and nuts, during the big box retailer's earnings call last week. He listed a raft of inflationary pressures, including higher labor, freight, and commodity prices. He also noted shortages of containers and products such as computer chips, greater transportation demand, and delays at shipping ports. It's a lot of fun right now, he quipped. Galanti also warned the increased cost of freight and other items would be permanent, and said Costco has passed on those higher expenses to customers via price hikes. His comments challenged the Fed's narrative that the recent spike in inflation is transitory, 
and will fade as the economy grinds back into gear, and align with Burry's expectations. Burry has deleted his Twitter profile a few times this year, and offered no explanations for his latest departure. The investor is best known for his lucrative bet against the mid-2000s housing bubble, which was featured in the book and the movie The Big Short. He also paved the way for the meme stock boom this year by investing in GameStop in 2019. Today, the investors who use these low-cost and highly efficient passive strategies now make up nearly half of the money in U.S. stocks and have become a risk to the system in recent years. Yet the concern right now isn't just about how passive investors might impact markets. The broader worry is why American stocks remain attractive during the worst crisis in a century. It's frightening to consider that so much money is being put at risk like this when it's so obvious that there is a disconnect. Yet, we are even more in the dark about what the true value of financial assets should be in July 2020 than we even were in 2008. The risk profile of U.S. stocks cannot be accurately measured. There are too many unknowns about how the pandemic will unfold and what the actual impact will be on businesses and economies. What the share price of a company should be right now will not be much more than a guess. There should be a deep discount on share prices, not a premium. At some point, investors will realize that current valuations did not match reality, and the race for the exit will be far uglier than what we saw in the last financial crisis. That awakening could come very soon, too, with earnings season underway. We will gain some much-needed clarity about the scale of the damage that was wrought by the coronavirus on corporations in April, May, and June, as well as receive some guidance about what the rest of the year could look like. Confidence is a fragile thing. Once it's lost, getting it back is expensive and time-consuming. The experience since the last financial crisis a decade ago is ample evidence of that, with central banks around the world unable to wind down their support without severe consequences. Perhaps that is what many investors currently believe too, that they can always rely on the backing of the U.S. government, no matter the events playing out on the ground, to keep stock markets chugging along. Yet, can the Fed step up its support from these already heady levels if there's another market crash? How long can it continue to pour trillions of dollars into the system after having done so for much of the past decade? Even if it can meet such expectations, it might be too late by then for badly wounded investors. Well, that's it for today's video, guys. Also, we would like to mention that this is not a channel intended specifically to provide financial advice, and we do not ask you to invest in any company. This is merely a channel directed towards bringing educational content to your doorsteps. With that in mind, before you invest in anything, we recommend you do thorough, wide-spectrum research on the topic. And make sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time on Michael Bird's Bye!